Let's have a session on ratio analysis. This is specifically for Edexcel A-level business. So when you're doing a ratio analysis for Edexcel A-level business, you'll be looking on the statement of comprehensive income. And there you'll be able to do the various ratios that are gross profit margin, GPM, operating profit margin, OPM, and profit for the year margin, which is just basically the net profit margin. Two different names there. The ones we're going to deal with first is gross profit margin, and then in the later of this video, we'll go for the other types of margins there are, which is all the types of ratio analysis. So the first one, gross profit margin, GPM, the formula is gross profit divided by revenue times by 100 because it's expressed as a percentage. Now, if we look here at a statement of comprehensive income, we we'll see that if we take the gross profit, the gross profit is there, so it's £150,000, £150,000, and then we divide that by the revenue, the sales revenue, that's the same thing. So there, it's £200,000, £200,000, times by 100, and that comes to 75%, because it's always percentages when you're doing margins. So 75% is gross profit margin. That means, basically, for every £1 of sales, 75 pence is gross profit. Gross profit would mean that it's accounted for the cost of sales, which is essentially the direct costs involved in the production of that product. So analysis points for gross profit margin is going to be the higher the gross profit margin, the better. Higher the GPM, the better. Number two is it only accounts for direct costs, as previously mentioned, only accounting for those cost of sales, and therefore it's essentially a measure of productive efficiency because it's looking at your revenue and it's just stripping away the production costs involved, those direct costs involved. And number three, it's going to help inform management, the stakeholders' management, the decision-making process. It could be they might want to consider previous years and how the gross profit margin may have improved or worsened. If it worsened, they might want to put strategies in place to improve that. And also they might want to compare two rivals within the same industry to them to see if they are above or below average. And again, it might force them to put strategies in place to maintain that or improve that GPM if they're not satisfied with it. So that's gross profit margin. Now let's look at operating profit. Now let's look at the operating profit margin. So the operating profit margin formula is as so. It's operating profit divided by revenue times by 100. Now if you use the statement of comprehensive income we have over here, we can just take the numbers. So we got 50,000 for operating profit. You find that here, operating profit, 50,000. And then you just look to the top for the sales revenue, the revenue, same thing. And that's 200,000 pounds times by 100, and that gives an answer of 25%, always expressed as a percentage. Which basically means, in terms of operating profit, every one pound of sale, 25 pence, is operating profit. And within that number, we can establish the fact that we have now accounted for direct costs, being the cost of sales, and also indirect costs, being operating expenses. So analysis points to think about. The higher your operating profit, the better. The higher the operating profit margin, the better. And number two is that it accounts for, as I said earlier on, direct and indirect costs. Direct costs being the costs involved in the production that can be directly attributed to the production. So for hats, it could be materials to make the hats. And for expenses, it could be um, marketing costs because marketing costs are not directly attributed, they are indirect costs. So direct costs, indirect costs, and they are all accounted for in the operating profit margin. Now, when we did the gross profit margin, it only accounted for the direct costs. So it's a good measure of how well the business is operating, hence it's called the operating profit margin. But the thing to note is that it does not include, so it excludes interest costs that might be involved in setting up the business through loans, for example. So it's a great measure of operating performance, but not necessarily of overall performance. Now, overall performance, you'll need to look at the profit of the year margin, which is the same thing as the net profit margin. Number three is that it helps inform management in terms of their decision making. They might want to compare to previous years and rivals through using that operating profit margin. Now let's look at the profit for the year margin or net profit margin. So the formula is profit for the year or net profit because it's the same thing divided by revenue times by 100 because it's expressed as a percentage. So if we look for the profit for the year, you're going to find it at the bottom of the statement of comprehensive income. So that's £40,000, £40,000. 
And then we just put the revenue in, so 200,000 pounds times by 100, and that comes to 20%. And that means for every one pound of sale, 20 pence is net profit or profit for the year. Analysis points to consider. So the higher the profit for the year margin, the better, of course. But now it's accounting for your direct costs, your cost of sales, your indirect costs, those day-to-day -day expenses, operating expenses, and also financing costs that are obviously paid down over time through interest. And it might be a loan that's been used to set up the business, and that loan needs to be paid back over time. And that's why the profit for the year margin is, is useful. And it's a true reflection of business performance, especially for a highly geared business, a business that has lots of debt something to consider there. And number three, as always, it helps inform management in terms of decision making against previous years, if it's trending upwards or downwards, and also compared to rivals within your industry. I hope that helps. See you at the next sesh.